What's up everybody? Once again, my name is Matt and welcome back to the demo of The Legend of Zelda Triforce Heroes. This will probably be my last video on the demo because, well, after this there really isn't anything left to show off. Plus, by the time this video goes up, the demo will most likely be over. Like, you'll still be able to play local mode, but uh, you only get access to the first stage for some reason. And I'm not really sure why they did that. Regardless, before we go too much farther into this video, yes, this is post-commentary in case you're wondering, and the reason for that is because it took me way too long to record this video. Like, this is probably my 20th or so attempt at playing this stage. Like, I tried recording it a bunch beforehand, but sometimes this stage wouldn't get picked, so I would scrap that recording. Other times, I would get, like, a troll player or someone who just refused to help out. And then other times, it was just like way too laggy to make a good video, so... Yeah, I finally got to experience some of the bad things about the online mode in this game. But it's funny because, like, I realized something while attempting to record this. Like, when I tried recording shortly after the demo servers went live, it was mostly trolls or bad players. But, after I waited until, like, 12 a.m. my time, a lot of the players were more focused on actually beating the stages, and at that point, it was just about finding a lobby that wasn't laggy, so I guess it's just like some of the younger kids who are, you know, trolling and screwing everybody up, so if you get this game on release, don't be that guy. Just cooperate, you know, everyone wants to actually beat this game, so be cool about it, guys. Anyways, this is the Fire Temple stage. It's really fun. Uh, definitely requires you to work together the most out of all the stages in the demo, and it can be very challenging. Also, I'm playing as Red Link in a level that's like almost entirely red, so I'm pretty sure in this video you will see me lose track of my character a few times, and I'll just do something stupid like run right into lava or off a cliff or something like that, so... Yeah, that's kind of why. Um, honestly, I think it's because I'm so used to seeing my character as green that it took my brain a little while to adjust. Or, you know, that's just like me making excuses for being bad at this game. Now, I gotta say, this is a really stinking cool level. Like, this is a normal stage. It's not a boss battle, but I guess you could, like, consider this a mini boss. But, um... The idea is you need to grab the bombs and then throw them into the carts where these monsters are. It's really stinking fun. Super hectic and um, yeah, you gotta work together with your teammates. And since I do have the boomerang, I'm um, trying not to grab the bombs that the enemies throw at you. Instead, I'm trying to grab the ones on the pillar and uh, use those. That way my teammates can get the ones that the enemies are throwing at us. But um doesn't really work all the time because if one of your teammates like walks in front of the path of the boomerang the boomerang will actually pick them up and then things can get a little bit awkward after that like you could accidentally throw your teammate into the lava or something like that so you got to make sure you pay attention uh, when you grab things with your boomerang when you're playing this game other than that though yeah it's really fun uh, and I had like pretty good teammates so once the green link like stopped trolling because he did troll a little bit when we started the first stage, but, um, after that, like, he was pretty chill about it and, uh, didn't really bother us too much. Actually did try to work together, so once we had that going for us, we were able to, like, demolish those enemies no problem. So really, the only problem I see with the online is just finding a good group. Um, they did region lock the online too to avoid lag, which I'm totally okay with. So, like really only people from North America can play with other North American players. Uh, same for Europe and Japan, which is okay. Like, I understand the reason behind that because when this game does get laggy, it is kind of unplayable, especially in some of the time-based puzzles. Also, oh, I totally forgot about this. Uh, this block puzzle was the hardest thing in the world to get three people with limited communication to work on because we all had, like, different ways we wanted to pull and or push this block, and I'd actually gotten this far into the demo before, so I already knew, like, the most efficient way to pull and place this block, and I knew where it had to go. But, uh, trying to explain it to the other, like, two players, not the easiest thing in the world. Like, Nintendo probably should have added, like, a push emoticon or something to make it a little bit easier, but, um, yeah, we eventually do get it moving, although we don't really push it the way that I kind of wanted them to, because 
there is a faster way to solve this puzzle. I just couldn't get these guys to do it, so I sort of just like went with whatever they were thinking that way. You know, at least the puzzle would get solved eventually. So back to what I was saying about online. Yeah, it's going to be hit or miss, and really, I would only recommend using the unknown heroes uh, search function if you really, really need to. If anything, playing with friends online is going to be what you're going to want to do. And um, if you guys don't have any other friends that have this game and you want to play it online, here's what I would like you to do. Uh, post in the comments, you know, what region you're from along with your friend codes, and then hopefully... Uh, we can get like a little bit of a community going because I know a lot of people who watch me enjoy Zelda and they're probably good at the games So I imagine that um if you pull from the people who watch my videos and the people who post in the comments You'll get a good group of players who actually want to get through this game together and not troll and hopefully uh, Can work together without like having to communicate too much So that's what I'd like you to do like say hey, you know, I'm from North America or hey, I'm from Europe Here's my friend code you know, I'm looking to play during this time. Anyone want to help out? And hopefully someone will reply and uh, you guys can get like a cool Zelda party going. And hey, you know, maybe, maybe if you're lucky, even I'll show up eventually and uh, help you through one of the stages. Anyways, though, uh, once we finally got the block where it needed to go, I was just like, all right, you know what? I'm going to try and throw them up there because you need the guy with the arrow to shoot a switch that's up there. You can't really see it from my screen, but... Just know there is a switch up there that the arrow guy needed to hit. But that was pretty much the last thing that we needed to do in this stage. Honestly, that was a pretty challenging puzzle for people with, like, no communication to solve. Also, yeah, I finally found out what this, like, weird squid thing was for at, like, the end of the stages. If you just hit it repeatedly with your sword, you get, like, a bunch of hearts, rupees, and stuff like that. So... That's pretty cool. Make sure you don't kill that thing immediately when you see it with an arrow like I did in the first video of this demo that I recorded. Anyways, though, uh, now it looks like we are moving on to the boss of the Fire Temple, which uh, is something I did not expect. So it's, it's pretty cool, and there is a nice little twist to it. Although, yeah, Green Link trolling again, man. But uh, he finally comes down, and here we go. Guess what? The boss of the Fire Temple... Is everyone's favorite is Moldorm, baby, but there is an interesting twist to this version of the fight. So you'll notice that his eyes are emitting a color, and uh, whatever color he's emitting is what Link he is going to chase. So when he's chasing your color, make sure you run away, and hopefully your teammate will deal the damage to him. When he's not chasing you, just try to be the one to deal the damage. It's actually a pretty interesting twist on the whole Moldorm fight, and then... Yeah, once you get to, like, phase two, he raises his tail up a little bit, so you can't actually hit him unless you use the totem mechanic. So, I don't know, I think it's a unique twist on how to fight Moldorm, especially since Moldorm is usually a pretty boring fight. Like, you just gotta wait in a corner or something like that, and, um, then hit his tail. And yeah, that's the area where I just, like, lost track of my character and fell off completely. But, you know, I regained control, and we're ready to take him out. Now, phase three... That's when things get a little bit sketchy and more like a typical Moldorm fight because he becomes really sporadic, uh, out of control, super fast as well. So you just sort of like gotta randomly go in for a hit and hope you can take him out. I think it's a couple of more hits before that'll happen. Maybe it's right now. Yeah, he goes insane right now. And uh, once he does this, you need all three links to combine together, make a totem and uh, then take him out. I think it's only one hit at this point, so yeah, there we go. We took him out. Pretty simple. He's not that quick when he's in, like, his final form, so uh, it is pretty easy to do. And if you have someone in the archer suit, uh, it makes it incredibly easy. Also, by the way, uh, I was wearing the Lucky Loungewear, which allows you to randomly negate damage sometimes. Not sure if, like, that ever showed up in this particular recording, but it is pretty helpful in some of the tougher stages like this one. Uh, where sharing health and losing hearts is incredibly easy. So, with that, we complete up the Fire Temple. I have no idea what they were doing. Green Link trying to kill himself or something. But, uh, thankfully, we do make it out safely. And now, it's time to get our rewards. So, let's see what we're gonna get this time. I actually forgot. And I got a Demon Fossil. Cool, I could actually use that in my Spirit Tracks LP. <laughs> Alright. 
Yes, it does look like that is going to do it for the rest of this demo since there's really nothing left to show off. Now, of course, I will be doing a full Let's Play of this game when it releases, so make sure you're subscribed for that. Anyways, if you guys do enjoy this video, a like rating would be greatly appreciated. If you want to see more, consider subscribing. But once again, guys, my name is Matt. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.